Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, we're going to dive deeper into the open source library called Visro. Here to share more about Visro and walk us through a few examples is Peter Pejovich, a software engineer who is actively contributing to the Visro project. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well and excited to talk about Visro. Uh, me too. Uh, Peter, can you please uh, share with our viewers a brief brief overview of what Visro is? Okay, so Visro is high level Python framework uh, for quick and easy uh, creating of uh, data visualization multi page web apps. And you actually don't need to know any dash HTML, CSS, or JavaScript for uh, making Visro. Uh, dashboards because all of this is generated uh, for you by a simple configuration. Uh, however, users benefit from uh, all the underlying power of Dash framework like scalability, uh, flexibility, customizability, and so on. And we can say that uh, while Wizro aims to simplify the creation of dashboards for beginner users, it also allows advanced users uh, to extend functionalities by writing pure Dash uh, code or custom CSS, JS, and so on. Nice. And, and for today's tutorial specifically, you're going to focus on Visro actions. Can you please share what with the audience what these actions actually mean? OK, so Visro actions is actually a mechanism uh, for running Python functions on the server side. Uh, they are, uh, Wizro, every Wizro action is made up of four, um, four parts. The first part is a trigger component. The second part is the Python function. The third part is inputs components. Uh, those values will be propagated to the Python function. And the last one is outputs that are actually components, those values will be changed uh, accordingly to the return values of the Python function. And we typically divide uh, Wizro actions into two types. The first type is predefined action, and the second type is the custom action. We are going to uh, show later in this session. Cool. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so as we all know, one of the best ways to learn is to see things in action. So Peter has presented, not, not presenting yet, but will present, Peter has prepared three examples to highlight the usage of Visor actions. The first will be predefined actions. The second will be custom built actions. And the third will be a combination of the two. Peter, all yours. Thanks. So yes, uh, I prepared three uh, pretty similar actions. Actually, the UIs of these examples are pretty similar, but the definition of the actions in the background is, is uh, different. So we can see the standard, very basic uh, Wizard dashboard and control panel of the left side of the screen. And uh, on the right side of the screen, we have, uh, in this example, two graphs, uh, pretty basic scatter chart graphs and one card component. In the first example, uh, I'll show you an example of the predefined action. And predefined action, uh, more specifically, it's the predefined action called filter interaction. Let's uh, trigger this action. So it will be triggered by clicking some data points on the source chart, which is left chart in this screen for this example. So when I click it, nice. some data on the right uh, chart is filtered. Now, I will show you how you can define this predefined action in the code. So let's quickly jump to the code here. And we can see uh, the basic just example of the Wizro dashboard with just one page and some uh, specification of our layout. But we are going to focus on this part. and. In page components, we can see three components we just uh, saw in the UI. And uh, in these lines of code is the definition of the behavior we just saw. So uh, every Wizard model have the 
actions argument where we specified some or predefined or custom or both actions here. And this is the just example of the predefined action. What makes the action predefined action? It means that we don't need to uh, specify or define any inputs, any outputs. It's all calculated uh, for you by a visual. And we can see that on this visual model action contains only one argument called function, which is filter interaction function. And it this function actually comes from, if we scroll up, <clears throat> from the visual actions module, and you can import this one, and you can import um, many more of these, and you can find uh, what actions you can reuse uh, in, in visual documentation. So filter interaction function actually have uh, one argument called targets. In this case, it's a list of strings, and this string is scatter chart two that actually represents the ID of the chart we want to filter. So scatter chart two is the ID of the target graph here. Uh, also to enable uh, filter interaction, we need to somewhere specify by which column uh, target chart will be filtered. And we can specify it also in a source chart here in the figure, in the chart, in the argument called mm -hmm. cast data. So this means that our target chart will be filtered by selected species of the source chart. So we can jump quickly back and see that how a target chart is always uh, filtered by a selected species of the source chart. So if oh, we nice. click Versicolor, it will be filtered by Versicolor. Virginica, here is Virginica, Setosa, and so on. Very, very easy filter of, of the chart and the data. Uh, do you mind, uh, Peter, jumping back to the code again? So just to summarize, because on line 26, we declare the custom data as species on line 26, that means that um, on line 29, when we say the target is scatter chart two, that means that whenever we click on the original graph, uh, which you, you showed us on the left side, um, a species, it will actually filter the DF that's on line 35 and then replot that data on that uh, target chart with this scatter chart two. That's amazing. It makes it a lot easier to just um, uh, filter, like make two graphs interact with each, with each other. Exactly, you're right. And I probably just forgot to say that uh, we always uh, define actions inside the component from mm -hmm. where this will be triggered. So it means if we interact with this graph, all these actions defined here will be uh, will be triggered. Perfect. So this was a pre-built functions actions. You said there's also custom build, right? Yes, exactly. So firstly, let's take a look into the second example that looks pretty similar like the per previous one. But uh, in the definition of this example, we actually defined a custom action. What does it mean? Uh, in the perf in the for the purpose of this session, I prepared a custom action which will uh, change output of the card below. So uh, it will be triggered in the same way by clicking some data points on the source chart, but the text of the card below uh, will be changed. So let's do it. Let's click this data point, this data point, this data point, and so on. So we can see how the text in the card below is changed. Yep. And now let's jump to the code and see how did we define it. Okay, here's the example of the custom action. The configuration for the dashboard and the page is the same. So we have one withdraw custom action. Actually, this is just a variable. I defined this action uh, above here. Nice. Here's the definition of the withdraw custom action. And what makes an withdraw action a custom action? Actually, uh, every time we specified our Python function, custom made Python function, it, it means that uh, this action will become a custom one. And we can scroll up for a little bit more. 
and we can see the definition of the standard uh, ordinary Python function that has some body, has some arguments, uh, has some return values and so on. So if we want to uh, declare a Python function to be uh, reusable in the actions world, let's say we all we need is just to decorate it by a capture with an argument actions here. So this capture is also could be imported from the Wizard modules. Mm. Okay, so what does this mean? It means when we trigger this action, this function will be triggered. And uh, actually this function just extracts some data from the inputs and uh, reshape it in a form of the string. And this string is just returned. Okay. So there are two more arguments here. Actually, these arguments are optional. It could be zero, one, or many inputs, zero, one, or many outputs for the custom actions. And every input or output for the custom action is actually just a string, uh, two part string separated by the dot, where the first part of this string actually represents the ID of the component. And the second part of this string actually just represent the property, one of the available properties we can find in the original dash documentation for mm -hmm. this component. So this scatter chart is actually the ID of this source chart. Okay. We use the click data, which is the set of, it, it's just info of which data is clicked, which column, it contains some X, Y values, it contains some custom data values and so on. For the outputs, this is the my card actually represents the ID of the card component below. And we are going to change its property called children. The so, content. yes, exactly. So if we jump back, uh, we can show it again. And this string is actually created and calculated on the server side inside the body of the Python function uh, every user can write. On its own. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's go back to the code for a sec, Peter. Um, for those who are not um, used to working with callbacks or custom build functions, what actually is happening here is very similar to what happens in Dash. If uh, our audience members will look at um, line 20 in the inputs, if you don't mind highlighting also, Peter, the click data of the scatter chart is actually referencing the function argument on line 9. So that points data. That's that's exactly they're they're both the same thing, and whenever the uh, data is clicked in that graph because that's an input, the built-in uh, function is is triggered. It does what Peter wanted it to do to generate a text, a string, and that string, that object, is returned to the output to the children property of my card. You see, so an input is an input of the, of the argument of the callback function. And then the output is whatever the um, function uh, returns. Um, but very seamlessly built, everything comes together and it's very easy to understand what triggers it and, and what is the end result. Thank you, Peter, for, for creating yes. this example. Exactly, thanks. Okay, now we have, so we did the, the built-in, then we did a custom built action. And now we said that you prepared a combination of the two, right? Yes, exactly. So uh, in a really uh, straightforward way, you can actually chain actions. So I prepared the third example where all I did is just reuse the code we already saw. So the code from the first example, code of the predefined action and the code from the second example, the custom action example. And I just chain them in a list of actions uh, and we'll see it in a code, but let's firstly trigger this chain of actions. So if I click here, even this data of the darker chart is filtered and text of the card below is changed. So let's trigger it several times again. And now uh, we can jump to the code again and see how these actions are actually just defined. So we are already uh, familiar with this code definition of the custom action, with this code definition of the predefined action. And all we did is just 
uh, if we scroll below, all we did is just uh, defining these two in a list, in list. of actions, nice. yes, from where this chain will be triggered. Oh, okay, so it, in this example, both uh, functions were triggered and are triggered bar by the the scatter chart graph on the left, which is why we can put them both in the same list under under the actions um, property. But if one yeah. of them was triggered by the third graph or fourth graph and the other was triggered by a different graph, we would have to separate them, right? Yes, exactly. So uh, they are they are triggered in a sequential order. So firstly, this action will be triggered, then this action will be triggered, and we can reuse these in multiple graphs and we can actually uh, sort or or reuse and, and trigger the same thing from the several places if we okay. want. Okay, does it matter? It's a sequential, but does it matter which one you put first? Can you put the custom action first and then the predefined action? So in this example, it doesn't matter because even if we change the order of these actions, uh, again, the same, uh, the, so, the same behavior will happen so both outputs will be changed but there are some examples when you need uh when the output of the first action could be and some input of the second action in okay. that uh case the, the the order matters cool well thank you so much peter for for sharing these examples with us uh for making it very clear under the three different examples of how to how to use uh, actions in Visro. Uh, to learn more about Visro and start using it, please visit the Visro docs. We have a link next to the video. Um, and that's really it. Peter, is there anything else you would like to share before we uh, end this tutorial? I don't know what to say. Oh, I can just encourage our users to pip install Visro and to turn some data to dynamic story. Thank you, Peter. I highly appreciate it. Um, have a wonderful day. You too. See you soon.